So here we have lab number 11. This is a synthesis reaction. So what we're going to try to be doing is taking some simple aluminum, reacting it with some other reactants, uh, namely potassium hydroxide, strong base, and then with sulfuric acid, strong acid, and then we're going to try to turn this into alum. We have some aluminum already. So this has been cut up. We need to tear our weighing dish. We're going to hit zero. And we need to get as close to 0.75 grams as possible. There's 0.70. Ooh, that's about, see if I can get one more out of here. Okay, 0 0.78, 0 0.77. That's probably about as close as we're going to get. So we're going to record that as 0 0.76 grams. So what we have here is three molar potassium hydroxide solution. You'll notice I'm wearing my gloves. I don't like this stuff. It gets on your skin uh, just like sodium hydroxide. It will dissolve your skin, uh, makes it slippery, and then all of a sudden it feels like you've got a rug burn, only worse uh, if you're lucky. So if you get this on you, you want to make sure you get this rinsed off with soap and water very quickly. So we're going to add this and it's going to get hot. We're going to stir it. And it's not going to start off super fast because the aluminum we know does have a anal, uh, aluminum oxide coating to it. We'll see it's starting to uh, get cloudy. I'll probably cut away a lot of this so you don't have to watch this 15 minutes of stirring. At this point you see we have a very strong reaction occurring. Now you wouldn't put your face over this but I can put the camera over it. <coughs> a strong smell. Very vigorous. A lot of steam coming out of this. So it is hot. Again, that's why you would want to wear gloves because if any of this is hot potassium hydroxide, that is going to recondense on your fingers. And hopefully we're going to get all of the aluminum dissolved. Hopefully the aluminum is the limiting reactant and it runs out first. Have to look down in this. <coughs> Definitely a color change, isn't it? I don't see any solid pieces of aluminum. Again, I'm not sticking my head over this. Once the reaction is done, it is done. So now we are going to put in three molarity or three molar sulfuric acid. It's 2SO4. We're going to add this only. We got 25 milliliters of this. We're going to add this at about five milliliters at a time. We are not going to add this quickly. We never add water to acid, but we are going to add very slowly this acid to any of the water that's in here because the strong acid can rip apart the water molecules, creating a huge amount of heat. Um, so that's why we're going to do this very slowly. So hopefully I've zoomed this in. Again, I'm keeping my face away from the top. I can add this little stirring rod to the tip of this. I'm gonna stir this in. And I don't know if you can see it. We've got some clumps that formed immediately. 
They're all big white clumps. So all of the black coloring going away. It's almost a paste. It is warm to the touch. Starting to break down just a bit now. And get it all off of the sides. So yeah, it's starting to break down a bit. We want to let this react very, very well. Last five milliliters. So have a few floating pieces here and there, not too many. We will heat this and see what we can do with that. What I want to show you is that we do have some white crystals in here. And so we know that uh, the solubility curve with temperature, we know if we heat this up, we will try to get these dissolved. The tricky part is we want to get all of these dissolved into solution. But as soon as it touches a cooler piece of glass, namely our filter funnel and our filter paper, it's going to cool immediately and some of those crystals are going to be lost in the first filtering process. Because what we're going to try to do is get as much of this um, alum into the solution dissolved when it's hot. So you have to consider this is going to be... Um, a process that we do lose some of this solid material during the filtration process if the equipment is cool. So to improve this situation, what we can do is possibly heat up, not hot, but at least warm the glass uh, so that it does um, keep it warm as it is filtering. And so one way we can do that is on a separate, if you have access to this, on a separate uh, hot plate, we can just heat this up. We're not going to get it wet, but we do want to just get it warm, uh, not so hot that you cannot touch it. But uh, as this is heating up, we would possibly try to do the same with this just to improve our results. So one of the lessons in this lab is working with your lab partner while one person is constantly stirring and watching this, seeing if we can get the crystals to dissolve, which we just did. Someone else needs to be cleaning up the graduated cylinders, getting those put back, getting the filter funnel apparatus set up, getting the filter paper ready. This is all gonna happen in this next clip. So being efficient while you're doing this really moves this along. If you are both watching this, uh, and this has taken at least five minutes to, to slowly bring this up to temperature to get these white crystals to dissolve uh, without letting it boil. So that's one of the things you definitely want to get good at when working with a lab partner or even by yourself. 
I guess I didn't uh, video this, but what we did, we transferred this hot liquid into here using my glass stirring rod. I directed this in here so it wouldn't drip. And so with this filter paper, we got everything out of this. Uh, not much of it because I did warm the funnel on another hot plate as it is going down. Any of the impurities that would still hopefully be in, caught in this filter paper. What we are looking to obtain is any of the dissolved aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate that is in this filtrate here. So then we will, once this gets done, we will um, take this, put it in the ice bath, and again with the uh, solubility curve based on temperature, as we cool this down, those crystals will reform slowly. And if the, the slower they reform, the larger, nicer crystals we will get. And then we will weigh those out, purify those, rinse them off, and get those um, for our lab results. So again, as this is filtering, we're keep, one person's keeping an eye on it uh, because this could have some uh, excess sulfuric acid, could have some, um, I, I would believe, probably not excess potassium hydroxide, but if you've read the lab, you know that um, there is some concern with those. So while that is happening, someone else, your lab partner, is getting this stuff ready. And so we need to get this into the ice bath and so someone would be getting that ready to use. And we would put the ice around it, making sure it does not go into the beaker. That does cause some problems because as you increase the amount of water, the solubility or the amount, the solubility stays the same, but the amount of water can dissolve more. So we don't want to increase the water. That's why we really didn't want to add water to any part of this, if possible. And then we will let this cool off while someone else is cleaning up the other material. So what I've got here, get this out of the way, is I've got a large beaker with ice in the bottom of it. We put in the beaker that is containing the material. Okay, still a liquid. You wouldn't do this, but uh, just for video purposes. And we're gonna let that cool until we start to see the crystals. Now we have a crystallized form. I'm not going to lie to you. I took ice cream salt, put it around the outside, onto the ice, making sure I did not get any salt inside of this. That was very tedious. And what we have here, once it got down to about six degrees, we got this nice crystal. Okay, so now we need to get this into so let me show you the setup here. We have this apparatus, this little creation here that works off of Bernoulli's principle. This water is going to flow past this very quickly, creating a negative pressure. This water is going to drain down, and then that's going to create a vacuum here. This vacuum is going to be attached to this vessel. This is a vacuum uh, flask has a special neck on this. And so then we have this rubber piece that's going to make a nice airtight seal between this and the porcelain Buchner funnel. The Buchner funnel is clay and so and porcelain, and it has all of these little tiny holes. So whenever we put our filter paper in there, it will pull the liquid through this very quickly. Now at this point, we don't want the liquid, we just want the crystals. So we are going to use the uh, rubber or the plastic spatula to try to get as much in there as possible. If we need to, we can use some ethyl alcohol 
to rinse this stuff in there because of the solubility of the alum into alcohol is very, very low compared to water. If we were to use water, we would dissolve some of it, uh, especially at a warmer temperature, but with the alcohol, it'll help it dry faster. As so as we turn this on, take our material, I'm going to try to get this into the very center so that it doesn't leak around any edges, if possible. Remembering that if we can get every bit of this, that is going to improve our efficiency or our percent yield. This, uh, the more we can get out is going to improve our percent yield. So that is about as much of this I can get out just using the spatula by itself. Using the ethanol. Sometimes you can hear the difference in the water pressure. I'm trying to create a, a vacuum here. I don't know if you can tell from the light. This is pulling air through this mixture to dry this material. Holes air through those little tiny holes or anything as it pulls it into here. And so, what we've got is air being pulled through here, it's drying the material. And again, <coughs> and again, if we add a little bit of alcohol in here, this will uh, not help us. Maybe you heard the, the vacuum kick in. But this is a lot, lot faster than gravity filtration. So here we have our material. It has dried thoroughly. We are going to place this into our weighing dish. I will transfer that material. So after transferring, we have 12.59 grams. The average percent yield for most high school chemistry students is 48 to 60 percent. So if this is above 100 percent, obviously, it's probably not dry enough. So 12.58, hopefully that's what we just had, I touched it. So we have 12.58 grams of material that we have recovered. So see what our percent yield is and get that... Uh, written up, put it into Google Forms. So what could we do with this? This could be uh, used in uh, manufacturing of paper. Uh, it could be used in pickling. Probably wouldn't want to use this. I don't know how pure it is. Definitely could use this as an astringent uh, or a steptic pencil. For all of you cool cats and kittens out there, it probably wouldn't be enough to stop the bleeding if you got your arm bitten off by a tiger, but you know, those are the days and times that we live in, and you would maybe understand that. So a nice little chuckle for you, and hopefully you guys are going to do well with this. This is the last lab. Enjoy, and then I'll get all of this stuff uh, evaluated, graded back to you, and enjoy your summer.